Today I will be showing you a 2019 crime thriller film titled A Good Woman is Hard to Find. Be ready for spoilers ahead. Sarah Collins is a young woman whose fate is less fortunate. Her husband Stephen, was killed by being stabbed right in front of Sarah and her two children. After the death of her husband, Sarah leaves as a widow, she struggles alone to be able to support her children with Stephen, Ben and Lucy. Sarah's life was poor after Stephen's death, and the most unpleasant part is that now Ben suddenly becomes mute due to the trauma of seeing his own father's murder. The boy always looked gloomy, lost his enthusiasm, and seldom paid attention to Sarah. Her unfortunate fate didn't stop there, Sarah also didn't get justice for her husband's murder. The police did nothing to catch the killer because his crime was instead considered a natural death, the result of an argument between thieves. Yes, Stephen's profession during his life was thief, this is what makes the police perhaps too lazy to investigate the case. Making Sarah continue to wonder and wait with uncertainty. Her mother was annoyed that Sarah remained silent when treated like that, she regretted her daughter's decision because she agreed to marry Stephen, which actually made Sarah's life miserable. Despite facing financial difficulties, Sarah ignored her mother's advice and refused to return to her parents' house. One day, after returning from her husband's grave, Sarah encountered Tito, who forcibly entered her apartment. Tito has just robbed a drug lord named Leo and manages to take a bag of illegal drugs with him. Tito had been hiding there the whole day before finally Sarah kicked him out. When Leo's men no longer saw Tito around the apartment, Tito became Leo's most sought after prey. His life was clearly in danger, but the problem now is that he got Sarah involved in the mess he made. Tito went back to Sarah's apartment the following day, where he had hidden the stolen drugs in the toilet. He offered Sarah money from the sale of the drugs, but Sarah declined out of fear. Moreover, Tito said he would do it for five days, long enough for Sarah to go through with anxiety and fear. Sarah's refusal is actually pointless, as Tito threatens to kill her if she doesn't cooperate. Sarah gave up, she let Tito in and out of her house. But one day, Sarah thought she could use Tito to find information about what happened to her husband. So after they talked the second night when Tito came, she asked him about her husband. Sarah thought, as a criminal Tito might have some information about Stephen's killer. Someone who seems to be covered up by the police, so no one dares to testify to reveal the culprit. Tito initially said he did not know, but after remembering his name again, he called Stephen a drug dealer. Sarah dismissed the fact as she believed her husband was not involved in the dirty work. Tito snapped at her and asked Sarah to get out of his presence. That night there was no information that Sarah could get, she has not yet been able to find peace and find out who killed her husband. It's a shame, but now Sarah and her two children can enjoy life a little and have fun from the money Tito gave her as part of the partnership. She can go shopping again without worrying about whether she has enough money or not. For a brief moment, Tito's presence proved to be extremely helpful. However, with the existence of drugs in Sarah's house, the situation became chaotic as Sarah was tempted to try it, but she still managed to resist the temptation. But due to a lack of caution, Ben played with it and used it. Sarah rushes to secure Ben, but the issue arises from Tito's intense anger toward Sarah. He tries to take advantage of this poor woman, but Sarah fights back and frantically stabs Tito. The incident ended fatally with Tito's death due to a deep stab wound and loss of blood. Sarah is confused about what to do with Tito's corpse. Before she could find a solution, two policemen arrived at her apartment after receiving a report of a commotion. Sarah was tense and panicked when two police officers came inside to check the situation. The police officers harassed Sarah over a perceived disturbance before asking her questions involving Stephen's relation to gang activity. Sarah angrily sends them away before going back in the bedroom. Only Sarah, her two children and Tito's corpse were left. On the other hand, Leo already knows that Tito is a person who stole his product. He also sought information on his whereabouts from friends who lived in Tito's apartment. When Tito's friends said they did not know where the man had gone, Leo then subjected them to severe torture by striking them with a hammer. Sarah is still safe so far, and she was occupied with purchasing the necessary tools to cut Tito's body. While undressing from Tito's corpse, she found a gun which she then kept. After that, she began slicing Tito's body into pieces. The activity really depressed her, but Sarah couldn't figure out any other way to get rid of Tito's body. So all day long, Sarah really spent her time doing those sadistic acts, suppressing herself until Tito's body was completely divided into smaller pieces, thus making it easy to get rid of them. Sarah did not throw away the pieces of Tito's body immediately. She kept the boxes containing Tito's body in the cupboard and began to think about where to throw them. For a moment, at least Sarah could rest easy. She started to get busy again taking care of her two kids, especially Ben with his speech problem. Sarah finally takes Ben for therapy, at which time Lucy keeps mentioning Tito's name. She didn't realize that Leo was there hearing Lucy say Tito's name. A result of that, Leon followed them all the way home. At the house Sarah had a guest, not someone sent by Leo but a woman from social services who received a report from the police that Sarah's children might need to be placed in an orphanage because Sarah was not taking good care of them. During their conversation, Sarah couldn't help but imagine herself dismembering Tito's body into several parts. 
Sarah was very disturbed, she knew that her life would never be normal again since Tito's arrival. Now she has become a murderer, even though the action was taken in order to defend herself and protect her children. The officer from the social services then asked her what happened last night. However, Sarah simply stated that the man who had entered her apartment yesterday attempted to force his way in, and she fought back until the man left. Sarah certainly did not tell the full version since she's not that crazy to throw herself in jail. The social service officer then left after receiving this information from her report. In the evening, after Sarah read her children's fairy tales, she left the apartment with a worn face, carrying black bags filled with pieces of Tito's body. Sarah throws them in various trash cans around the apartment. Everything was thrown away until there was nothing left in his cupboard but his head. The next day, when Sarah came out of the apartment, she saw two of Leo's men waiting across the street. Of course Sarah panicked, she tried to take her children away from them. Unfortunately, her efforts were only to be wasted because when they walked not far from the apartment, two of Leo's men stopped them. It didn't take long for Leo to come. Ben, upon seeing Leo, instinctively reacted with panic. He runs away and almost gets hit by a garbage truck. Luckily, the truck still had time to break suddenly. Some cleaners come down after seeing Sarah, who seems to be in some trouble. Their presence was enough to help Sarah escape from the clutches of Leo's men. She also ran over to Ben, while the garbage man fought with Leo's men who were cruel and unforgiving. During their fistfight, Sarah pointed at Leo and asked Ben if he was the one who killed his father. Ben confidently nodded, but his face remained filled with fear. When Sarah noticed that Leo was still having fun beating up the janitor, she immediately took her children and fled. Sarah hid in her mother's house, she did not know if it would be safe to be there, but she had nowhere else to go. Her mother could sense the fear on her face and knew that something was wrong with her daughter. However, Sarah was reluctant to disclose the situation, fearing that her mother would be disappointed in her. Sarah understands that she must solve everything on her own, it might be very risky but Leo must be stopped by Sarah herself. That night, after telling Lucy a story, Sarah promised Ben that Leo would never bother him again. When Sarah went downstairs, she found Leo sneaking in. Sarah said if Leo really wanted Tito, she would take him to his place but asked for an hour to do it. Leo also complied with Sarah's request to keep her word. So that very night, Sarah immediately returned to her house, which was already in ruins because Leo and his men had come there. Sarah had time to lay down, but her head turned to the cupboard, where the black plastic bag containing Tito's head was still tucked away in a corner. Sarah then mustered up her courage. She dressed up beautifully, marking the first time she had done so since Stephen's death, and then headed to the bar. She takes the bag containing Tito's head to Leo's headquarters where he and his men are already waiting for her. At first, Leo was angry because he didn't see Sarah coming with Tito. But after Sarah took Tito's head out of the bag, everyone in Leo's room fell silent. Leo couldn't even believe what he was seeing, at that time his face turned frantic and horrified, one of Leo's men calls Sarah a psychopath. Leo laughed along with everyone else, he hadn't anticipated Sarah's bravery and hadn't yet considered her a threat. Until Sarah said her husband's name and pulled out a gun hidden in Tito's head. Sarah said that she even had the nerve to mutilate Tito, so it wouldn't be difficult to kill Leo and his men. She shot both of Leo's men, then did the same to Leo. She also asked Leo about the reason he killed Stephen. Gasping for breath, Leo claimed that Stephen had interfered in his affairs, a move he didn't like, and therefore he decided to kill him. As he was explaining, Leo's hand was secretly reaching for a gun that was not far from his body. He waited for Sarah to let her guard down to shoot, but the chance never came because Sarah shot Leo first with two bullets, finishing him off with a fiery vengeance. Lastly, Sarah also hit the head of Leo's man, who was still alive with a hammer. With nothing left, Sarah exits after taking the security footage of the bar that night. The police never uncovered the crimes she committed because they connected the deaths of Leo and his men to gang conflicts, as evidenced by the discovery of Tito's head at the scene. Leo's murder was also considered a case of revenge between fellow drug kingpins. After a few weeks, Sarah continues to lead a fulfilling life with her two children. She appears happier now, nothing bothers her anymore as her life continues to proceed normally, even without Stephen's presence. But one thing is clear, she knows now that Stephen was never a drug dealer as rumored. Her husband died because he wanted to help others and died as a hero. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this.